So for me, uh, getting into barbecue was something that came very late in my culinary career and it was just a way to reconnect with cooking. And one of the things uh, when I started to learn about how to make barbecue was how to make rubs. For me, starting off in a French kitchen, I think my idea of a rub back then, and I didn't call it a rub, was just salt and pepper. So I, I kind of came up with this, I coined this phrase, the stereotypical expected flavors of barbecue. And, and so what are those? I mean, there's the meat. I always want the meat to be the star. I want the, the we're gonna make ribs today, and I want those ribs, to, I want you to be able to taste that pork and taste that delicious meat. And then I want the smoke and the sauce and the seasoning to be supporting backdrop flavors. But I don't want it to be uh, too assertive. I don't want it to overtake the flavor of the meat itself. So we need to use really uh, fresh spices. This is coriander and it was, uh, you can smell it. It's very floral, cumin, coriander, peppercorns. I will grind those fresh. And in the commercial setting, you might think of that as a lot of work. You know, do you want to put that much labor into it? But I think if we're going to make our signature flavors, having really fresh, bold spices versus faded, flat seasonings, um, it's, I think it makes a difference. As I started you know, learning, like, how do you begin to make a, uh, a, a rub or, or a seasoning blend, most of them always start with salt. So maybe you just come in with a couple of tablespoons of kosher salt. And then we can come in with sweetness. And, and I like a lot of rubs that don't have any sugars in them at all. Today we're doing ribs, so let's just say we're gonna bring in a little sweetness. Do you want it slightly salty or do you want it slightly sweet? And so it becomes this balance. So let's just say we're gonna do uh, one tablespoon of sugar. Then it comes into spices. I've got some fresh cracked black pepper here. So we'll come in with a couple of teaspoons of fresh cracked black pepper. My wife is not a big fan of garlic, but I think uh, So you're going people, smaller and smaller. I'm going to go teaspoons. smaller, right? So, <laughs> um, so we'll come in with some granulated garlic. We could come in with some granulated uh, onion. I'm a bigger fan of granulated garlic and granulated onion versus onion powder and garlic powder. If you look at Texas barbecue, they'll have coarse ground black pepper on that brisket or, or that beef rib and it's just got a nice textural crunch. And so when it comes to granulated onion and granulated garlic, I like the flavor better, but I also like the mouthfeel. So this is some smoked paprika here. It's got you know better flavor than, than non-smoked paprika. It's gonna bring in a really nice color that we're gonna put on these pork ribs. Do about one and a half teaspoons. Something that I think everybody, every operator should really pay attention to when they're making a spice rub is when you go to use it, some of these spices will really clump up on you. Cayenne pepper will clump up, uh, paprika will clump up on you. So just shake it up really well. I load it into this little uh, tea bagger. If we just tap it, you see how it just flutters out like that? And here's another thing that I learned about making rubs and it was really interesting to me. I learned that when I made rubs, if these flavors kind of co-mingled for a period of time versus just right now making this rub, and going right to the pork, it's not as good as if I let that rub just kind of hang out. All those spices and ingredients hang for you know a few days. I will vacuum seal spices and, and that really helps a lot. Anyways, we're gonna let that kind of hang out a little bit. We're gonna get us some, uh, some pork ribs and trim them up and we'll season them up and get them on the smoker. All right, let's do that. Okay. 